As we read earlier in the article, Soil and Plant Nutrition, a gardener's perspective, soil texture is very important to plants. It influences a plant's ability to get a stable footing, and the size of the dominant soil particles also affects how easily water will drain through soils. Sands will easily let water pass through, whereas clays will retain standing water. Ever wonder what texture predominates in your soil? Here, Mark Richardson, Director of Horticulture at New England Wildflower Society, explains an easy method for determining the composition of your soil, the mason jar test. Hi, I'm Mark Richardson. I'm the Horticulture Director for New England Wildflower Society, and today we're going to be looking at how to evaluate soils in your garden. Uh, we're going to do a really simple test. It's called the mason jar test, and for this we need um, several tools. Um, the purpose of the mason jar test is really to evaluate the percentage of sand, silt, and clay in your soils, uh, which is a measure of the soil texture and should tell you a lot about basic soil properties uh, like drainage, like nutrient retention, and those types of things. Um, so for the mason jar test, we need a mason jar uh, with a lid on it, uh, preferably a watertight lid. Um, we need a soil knife or a trowel or something that we can use to get a decent scoop of soil out of our garden. Uh, we need a little bit of dish soap, uh, only about a teaspoonful of dish soap, but just a tiny bit of dish soap. And of course, we need some water. Um, and let's look at how all these things are going to work to do the mason jar test. So out in the garden, you want to find a spot uh, that's you know got a pretty good representation of the soil type. Um, if you have very different soils across different parts of your garden, you may want to try to do a soil sample in multiple locations. Um, but for today's purposes, we're just going to do a sample right here in an area of the idea garden of Garden in the Woods. Um, so first and foremost, we're going to scrape off any mulch or organic matter on the top layer of the soil really try to get down to uh, you know topsoil essentially so we've scraped off all the leaves um, and once we've done that we're going to uh, just you know dig down about six inches or so kind of fluff up the soil maybe in an area about 10 8 to 10 inches wide um, and we want to make sure that we have about two cups of soil all together um, before we put the soil into the mason jar, we want to try to pick out any rocks or any large roots or twigs or anything like that that may be in the, in the soil sample. Um, so I've pulled out some rocks and as I fill up the jar I'll pull out more, um, but we're basically just going to take and put about two cups worth of soil into the mason jar. Oh, if you find any earthworms you should definitely take them out as well. You're not going to fill the jar completely, probably about three quarters full. Um, and then once you've filled the jar and you're happy with the amount of soil that you have in it, uh, we can take it back and, and fill it with water and, uh, and prepare the sample to sit overnight. All right, so we've got our jar full of soil, and right now what we're going to do is just put about a teaspoonful of dish soap in it. Um, the purpose for the dish soap is just to break up some of the surface area, make it a little bit easier for the uh, soil to break apart into its various uh, particulate sizes, um, and make it a little bit easier to mix up and settle out later. So I'm just gonna put about a teaspoon or less of this dish soap on the very top of the soil. You can measure it if you like to. Um, and then we're gonna fill the rest of the jar with water. Once the jar is full of water, we'll put our cap on tight. We really wanna to try to roll this around. We don't wanna shake it violently. Uh, we just want to roll it around a little bit like this. We want to try to get all the soil into suspension. Um, so try to get as much of, you know, as of that water distributed evenly through the soil sample in the jar as we possibly can. We'll just keep rolling it for a little while. And what we're basically doing is we're taking advantage of the fact that 
uh, the, text, the, the physical particles of soil are different weights and different sizes. And so what we'll see is as this settles out, um, you'll start to see layers develop. And all the sand particles, the really heavy um, particles in soil, the largest particles in soil will settle to the bottom. Um, our silt particles will settle sort of in a middle layer above the sand, and then any clay particles will settle to the very top. Generally in our area, uh, we have very little clay in our soils, and so I don't see a whole lot of clay when I do the mason jar test. Usually it's just kind of a fine dust on the very top of the sand and the silt layers. Um, but once you feel that it's adequately mixed, uh, you want to put it someplace and let it sit overnight. It's got to sit for quite a while so that it settles out. Um, so we'll take a look at this actually tomorrow and, uh, and we'll take some measurements on it and figure out what our uh, soil texture class is. Hi, so we're back. It's the next morning. Uh, our soil sample has settled out overnight into some pretty well-defined layers, although not as uh, well-defined as I might like. Uh, what we have is a, a thick band of sand at the very bottom of the jar, um, a very small band of silt just above the sand, and then a really thin layer of clay settled out on top. Um, you can also see that even though this is settled out overnight, the water is still pretty murky. Um, that's clay that hasn't quite settled out of the sample yet. And then if you uh, look closely, you can see organic matter, or organic matter that's floated to the top of the soil sample. So um, there's still some organic matter in the soil that we didn't get out, um, and that's all floated up to the top. What we need to do now is uh, figure out what the percent of sand, silt, and clay are in the sample so that we can determine what our soil type is. Um, we pre-measured this because it looked like it was going to be a little bit difficult to really do that while the video was filming. Um, what we found was that we have uh, a soil depth of about three inches in the jar and uh, two and a quarter inches of that soil depth are sand, uh, which leaves us with about five-eighths of an inch of a silt layer and a very, very small one-eighth uh, band of clay. Um, so we take that information and we divide it. Uh, we divide um, uh, two and a quarter inches of sand by three inches of the total soil profile um, and we come up with a percentage of 75 percent sand um, and then we divide the five-eighths inch layer of silt by three inches of soil and we get um, 21 percent silt. So what we do with those numbers is we look at what's called the soil textural triangle and on the soil textural triangle we see that we have um, clay on one side, silt on the other side, and then sand on the very bottom. Um, and what we do is take our numbers, uh, so we had 75% sand, and we draw an imaginary line from 75% to about 20 or 21% silt. We really only need to work with two numbers, um, because the third number will just automatically work itself out. And what we find, if we follow that imaginary line up from 75% and down from 20 or 21%, uh, we fall right about here, right in the heart of a sandy loam. So that tells us that the sample that we sampled yesterday um, and allowed to settle out in this mason jar test is a sample of sandy loam. Um, it has a high percentage of sand, a very small percentage of silt, um, and we know that we can make some basic assumptions about the physical uh, properties, the, the, um, uh, the moisture properties of that soil sample based on uh, knowing what the soil textural class is.